We're getting our lips around some American D. I'm winding up William on TikTok. We're talking about enjoying the great outdoors. And it's a double treat for my joke of the week. Two crackers this week. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Oh, I've heard off Ben. Oh, have you? Yeah. I um, I text him say, hope you're having a lovely time. Have you been told yet you might be getting rimmed on stage? Yes. And he replied was, well, it's nice that I've actually been invited. So I think he's up for it. I'll get practising. Coincidentally, what are you doing after this? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Help I Sex With My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what do you do if you see a Malteser on the floor? Leave it there. Or, how do you get into a rhythm of waking up super early every morning for a new job? More on that in a minute. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexed your boss? But we're not your usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen. The UK's leading etiquette expert, viral TikToker, and what, what else am I missing? Star of his own solo show. Star of his own solo show, best-selling author, and also Switzerland convict. Yes, I haven't had an update on that, actually. Oh, you have? It's still, no, it's still okay. pending. Um, um, no, we're not Jordan North, best-selling author, documentary maker, television presenter, and host of the new Capital Breakfast. Why don't we just call ourselves multi-hyphenates? I beg your pardon. It'll be quicker. Multi-hyphenates. We do many things. Oh, okay. We're multi-hyphenates. We're multi-hyphenates. I'm more Swiss Alps. You're more Swiss Roll. I've not had a Swiss Roll in donkey's years. How do you make a Swiss Roll? I shouldn't do any jokes about the Swiss Roll. No. Actually, no sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're already on thin ice yeah. for them. <laughs> How do you make a Swiss Roll? Push it down the hill. Oh, yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah, but we don't condone that. No. <laughs> Who, who Lots of hills in Switzerland, lots of mountains. Who was that from? Uh, that was from Gary. Okay. So thank you to Gary. I've not had Swiss roll. Do you remember Arctic roll? Mm. Mm. Yeah. They were a band, weren't they? No, it's Arctic Monkeys. Oh, right. Do you, do you have an Arctic roll? Arc, Ga- Arctic. Gatto. 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 That was oh, always... God, hang on, you, you're affecting my vowels. Gatto. Gatto. Yes. That was always like proper... 90s desserts, weren't it, from Iceland? Did you ever have Vianetta? Yes. Oh, yeah. I love Vianetta. Or a Muller Corner. Muller Fruit Corner? We had fruit in Yes, corner. I used to love this. Did you tip it in or did you spoon it in and have a bit of yogurt? Tipped. I were a Tips, tipper. You were. What were you? Yeah. T- well, I, I spooned it. I decanted it into the yogurt and then mixed it all around. I was six. I'm trying to think of rice pudding. Mm. Angel Delight, custard. Didn't have that. Bananas and custard. No, my mother did tiramisu. Did she? Yes. I didn't have tiramisu till at least me. You didn't have what? Tiramisu till my early 20s. It's my favourite dessert. Is it? Yeah, I'd say so. It is classic, yeah. When Mike and I were on holiday in Miami, we went to a hotel for uh, dinner and, and he ordered a tiramisu. And But, it, you know, you know, sometimes when restaurants sort of over fuss and, and just do tiramisu as tiramisu and it sort of came in this hard milk chocolate case and then you cut into it and it was too runny and it, they sort of reinvented it. No, just do tiramisu. Trifle as well. That's my other probably favourite. Sherry? Trifle? No, strawberry. Well, yeah, you can have strawberries in a sherry trifle. Oh, can you? Yeah. Oh. I like I like the um, trifle fingers soaked in sherry. Do you remember when I texted you the other week? Randomly. I said, you still make your Terry's chocolate orange cake? Yes, you did. You you made me that for my birthday. I'll, I'll tell you what, I think it was my 22nd, 23rd. That's how long it got. Yeah, that was it, a long time ago. One of the best cakes I've had, and I had it on train. Yeah, and I've thrown away that recipe book. You should do that again. Well, no, and I went to, I said, would you like me to make it for you again? And you said yes. And then I went to go and see if I could find that recipe online. And I can't. I'm still. I'm going to contact someone I think I know has that book. Oh, yeah. It was a good cake. And that was the only good. cake in that book I made. It was very good. It was very good. Anyway, should we do a toast? Yeah, sorry. Who should we toast to? Well, we're going to toast to you again. No. Um, yeah, we are. Because you've already, you're a couple of days in now to your new role mm-hmm. as the star. Well, I'd say Sean and Chris are the star, but you're the newest star <laughs> of the Capital Breakfast show. Thank you. Um, so, but... Bit of a twist, fresh from his own trip to Miami, where I go, Stuart follows, we have got American D. Yay! So, so, so we thought ca- we'd do a taste test. We'll do a taste test. Um, For those watching on YouTube, you can let's compare the packaging. I've got, I've got I think two, I prefer I've, the American one. I've got a D in each hand here. 
which is a standard Tuesday. And you can see it's sort of a little bit... Do you prefer the American packaging? I do, actually. I've, can I Describe ask you, it for our podcast listeners. It's, it's very similar, but a bit more old-fashioned, a bit like... Uh, it's got a cash... Well, they've a both bit got... A rustic. Oh, no, the new, the new one they did with, when they got royal warranted doesn't have the cat on it anymore. Oh, yeah. used to have a cat. Um, can I ask, have you ever had American D before? Uh, not for a while. Really? No. Okay. Have you? Uh, I've never had American D, no. Have you not? Well, open wide. Okay. We've got some here. We'll do a taste test. Oh. Now, I've already noticed. Have you noticed oh, with the American it, D it's just... screw top? American D, you can't do the pop. Yeah, boy. Oh, God, it does that every time you take <laughs> the top off. Watch. Yeah, boy. Lovely. So in these glasses, I've done English D. Oh, okay. Could you just put some... American, American D. D in oh, those are we going to get drunk here? Probably. Oh. And here comes the gin. Oh, oh, hollow. <laughs> and, and we're toasting to me. We are uh, toasting to you. Have you seen the buses yet? I'm on the buses. On the buses. And the billboards. Can I ask what is a bus? <laughs> <laughs> it's a large vehicle mm. that people get on. Oh, like commute. a limousine. Like a limousine, but yeah. for the public. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever been on a bus? Yes. Have you actually? I mean, I've never been on a bus like you're on a bus, but, but I have been in a bus. Honestly, because um, like Global Who on Capital, they've like done big marketing. I, remember, I feel like Beyonce. I'm everywhere. Honestly. Like, is Beyonce everywhere? <laughs> well, she's like mega. She is. Is she on a bus? Crazy. I don't think she is on a bus. Walk past a bus and there's my ugly mug on it. I'm like, oof. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. One biggest argument to take the tube. I'm on the tube as well. Are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my word. Right. What should we go for first? Well, let's try, I think, British D. No, 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 because we know it. Should we go? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, okay. so we taste it. This is for Jordan. Congratulations. We, I'm sure you've had lots of lovely messages. Oh, thank you. Thanks to all the Gene Divas that have been listening as well. You sounded well. great on day one. Thank you. Okay. I mean, that tastes like I'm used to. That tastes like D to me. Because I think this came about because someone said a few weeks ago, that in America, the D tastes different. Mm. And here comes American D. Okay. Here you go. Mmm. Sweeter, I bet. No, that's much more red winey. Oh, is it? Let me try. Oh, that tastes like cold red wine. Whoa! Well, spag my ass and call me Miley. Woo! <laughs> Man, that's good shit. God bless America. <laughs> You can taste the spices, whatever the spices are. It's different, are. isn't mm. it? Yeah, the, uh, the American gin's definitely different. I'm not sure I like it as much. Mm, it's sweeter, I'm I gonna think. I'm going to go back to British. It's smooth. I think ours is... Ooh, ooh. Oof. Go back Go back to ours now. The Americans got it. So this is the British one. Yep. Oh, well, bloody hell, give me a rogering. <laughs> <laughs> what did one say? That's absolutely bloody splendid. God save the queen, uh, uh, the king. Yes. Jim, Jim, bloody hell. American. <laughs> we can be Jordan's wasting all his good ideas on capital, so we are now benefiting from <laughs> tired, creatively drained Jordan. Ooh. Which do you prefer? Good shit. Are you going to down one of them? Uh, I think I prefer... Go on, you haven't done a piddled episode for a while. I'll be piddled after this, thank you very much. I think ultimately that will benefit the episode. Right, I'm just saying, I can do good episodes sober. No, 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 but it's funny. It's funny when no, you're drunk. No, because we'll give, we'll, we'll give you a little behind-the-scenes peek behind the curtain here, Gene Viewers. Mm. Last time I got really drunk in that episode a few weeks ago, we had to cut a lot of bits, mm. mainly because I probably would never have worked for the BBC again. But we are going to play those clips out on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> I might have uh, <laughs> might have uh, gone on a bit of a rant about my old employees, <laughs> who you all loved. No, yeah, I didn't, yeah, no, I did, but might have, uh, mm. yeah. Talking of the tour, moving on. Uh, Gene Divas last week, of course, we announced the massive news that Help I Sex to My Boss Live will be hitting the big screen. Yes, so on Tuesday, the fourteenth of May. Our first night at the London Palladium will be broadcast live in cinemas near you. And we really are in cinemas everywhere. Should we do a little... Oh, hang on. Look at the light. It's gone. 
<laughs> Shall we do a roll call? Yes, let's do it. Hit it, Adam. <laughs> Sorry, are you having a stroke? Shimmying. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, we are very excited to be going as far north as Inverness oh. and as far south as the Isle of Wight and everywhere in between. Have you been to Isle of Wight? I have, yes. Yeah, did you go up ferry? No. Oh, you didn't swim, I take it. My so. friend Tom took me on his little, little boat. Oh, did he? Yes. Can you not remember there was a video of me where yeah. I was sitting at the front of this little rib and I was being tossed on the open waves? Maybe we will um, put this... <laughs> On our yeah, it's um, a very funny video. I was in a lovely nautical nautical jersey, <laughs> uh, and I nearly went over. But uh, it was great fun. Okay, and we sort of minced about where we docked. So that's nice. Have you ever been? Yeah, it's great. I went a few, couple of years ago. Had a lovely meal there. Nice. Fish and chips. Had there. Oh, that's that's lovely. And um, there's also a lot of Welsh G and Divas getting in touch about the tour. So we're very excited that we're across Wales as yes, well. Yes, we are. Um, we, we couldn't make a date in Wales work. We won't bore you with it, but we're going to be in cinemas. So to all our wonderful Welsh listeners, please do come along and see us at a cinema yes. near you. Borodar. T- Thank you. That means what? Fuck off. Good morning. Borodar. Borodar. Boyo. Tickets are on sale right now, so make sure you get yours at sexandmybus.com forward slash cinema. Do you want a coach? I'm sorry? A kutch. I haven't gone near kutch for quite some time. Do you know what a kutch is? No. My granddad was Welsh. Oh, was he? Mm, it's from... Have I told you this? No. Stuart, our chairman emeritus, is, is Welsh. He's from uh, My Steak. Oh, nice. In Bridgend. Oh, yes, you have talked about this Is before. it My Steak? Yeah. My Steak? Yeah, My Steak in Bridgend. Who's caught his jacket? Just in case people hadn't picked up that Stuart was Welsh from your impression of him. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. How's your week been? What's been up then? Yes, fine. Can I ask? Obviously, I'm terribly excited that you have got a new job and everything's going well for you. But could you flip and follow me back on TikTok? Oh, I'm so glad you've noticed. That was the first thing I wanted to say. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'm so glad you've noticed. That was very kind. That's the first thing right. I wanted. So, um... Because you're you're always getting digs in that you've got more followers than Because me you used to get digs in at me, yeah. off mic. Yeah, well, I'm not following you on t- TikTok purposely because I know it's going to really piss you off. It annoys me. Not See? But... Get me. For the, for the trailer, add in a little fish rod. Fishing rod thing, yeah. There you go. I'll do that again. I knew it. I knew it would wind you up, and I've done it purposely, and it's worked. I can tell by your face. Well, bring it on then. There you go. I tell you why it's annoying me. Not because I need the followers, because I don't. Is that I go to send you videos, and I can't send you videos. I have to then send them to you in WhatsApp, and it would just be nice to be able to share things with you. Yeah, easily. You sent me that UTV guy. Hilarious. Yeah, and I've I sent it to Maraid. Yeah, I thought and you would. It's so weird. I. Is she related? I thought when I lived in Northern Ireland, what was he called? What's he called? Uh, Julian Simmons. Julian Simmons used to come on and go, and now on the UTV, you get yourself sorted because Deirdre Barlow is going to be having a word with Ken Barlow. And you want to be careful because, oh, she's got something to say, so she has. It's coming up next on the UTV, right? And I... Can I just say, of all Jordan's impressions, which are of variable quality, that is the most accurate impression he has ever done. What's he called again? Julian Simmons. Julian Simmons. I will put a clip up on um, on our social media. Well, we don't need to. You've just done it. On our social media. And I I thought I'd met him up because I used to live in Omer. Yes, of course. I used to watch Corey. And I thought, and it's weird, I was thinking about it a few weeks ago, and I thought, what happened to him? And you sent me a link, and then I sent it to Maraid, and Maraid was like, oh my God, coming up next on the UTV, so you wouldn't be having it, it's all kicking off in the rovers, so it is, sure. So, <laughs> Bert Lynch is going to be having a few words with Jack Duckworth, and you want to be wanting having a few words with Bert Lynch, we want, and wait till you find out what Vera says, oh, it's going to be kicking up next on the UTV. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad I sent you that video. It's really, really made my week, but I'm not following you back. Okay, fine. Well, I'm probably going to unfollow you. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, what else has been going on in your week? Well, I'm, I've been thinking about your ring, and because you're thinking of getting a signet ring, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Are we still thinking about that? Yeah, I want to get a signet ring. Are you doing initials or crest? I'm going to get a Burnley badge on it. It'll be really classy. Oh. <laughs> I told okay. Freddie, like, oh... I hope you're joking. Yeah, well, on behalf of Freddie and me, I 
maybe get your family. I say your family crest. I would find a crest. We don't have a family. We weren't like you. Our family crest would be like a lump of charcoal or something. I don't have a family crest. What I like about signet rings is that they're it, this little tiny little bit of metal. Oh, gold, silver. What are you getting? Platinum? Gold. Gold. Okay. Platinum? I'm sure you can get it. This is, this is my rings, platinum. I thought platinum was like if you sold records. <laughs> well, you can, yes, but that's because it's the strongest metal. Oh, is that, I thought it was just if you went platinum. Well, yeah, but it is a metal. Like Celine Dion, she went platinum, didn't she? Well, she's probably double platinum or triple platinum. So is it an actual thing? That is platinum. You're looking at platinum. Are you, is he winding me up? Is it actually... It's a metal. So it's... Uh, right. Yeah. I just thought it was like you went platinum. Well, yeah, but... That's the kind of the difference. But, yeah. You're all right on CD yeah. UK and they've gone platinum. Did you ever watch... CD UK. No, no, I was live and kicking. Of course you were. I was BBC. Of course you were. Yeah. Um, I was on live and kicking as I know. a child. Yeah. Um, anyway, so you're going gold mm -hmm. with a crest on your little finger? Yep. Okay. And why? Because I just think they look cool and I want one. Okay. Do you not worry they're a bit elitist? I did. No, they? no, they're back in. I did have my pinky ring that was quite expensive and I bloody lost it in an Uber mm. during a very heated argument. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, with the driver? No, yeah. Yeah, with the driver, yeah. Oh, mm. you could come signet ring shopping with me. Yes. You can take my ring around London. <laughs> you up for that? Yes. Like the old days. We like throwing a hot dog down the Mersey Tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. I've got a bone to pick with you, actually. No, right, go on. You know that chlor chloronic? I've yes. Got chloronic. Coming up. Yeah, so I'm at Capitol in the global office, planning my diary. Yeah. I've shared it with... <laughs> <laughs> I've shared it with my boss's PA <laughs> so she can see my diary. For context, <laughs> she... <laughs> I've invited Jordan to... It says, Jordan's colonic. <laughs> she said to me, to come up to me. Oh. She went, have you got a minute? I went... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She said, can I just take... I went, no, do it here. It's all right. She went, no, no, no. I could just go somewhere a bit quiet. I was like, yeah, right. She went, I was just wondering if um, we're going to put you in for an interview, but it's come up on your diary that you've got a colonic in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where to look. <laughs> I was like, I forgot. I shared my diary with you. It's not my boss's PA. And I was like, right, um, don't worry. You could do the interview... I Whilst having the I know, I said it's for the podcast. And, yeah. she, and she went, oh, you're doing it on stage? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay. So Well, that clonic's tattooed in various people's diaries. Yeah, so it's I... weird sharing your diary with people because obviously they can see everything, can't they? But I do have two diaries. Oh, though. dear. Mm. Of course you do. In fact, I have three. I have one I share with Mike. Do you know how many couples don't have shared diaries? Do you have a shared diary? Yeah. Mm. Just, it's... It's yeah. so it's, it makes life so much easier. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I said, I think it was Daryl and Michaela I said it to a couple of years ago. And they looked at me as if I'd sprouted three heads and oh, suddenly shit, went... I need to text Daryl back. He's going to stop at mine in a couple of weeks. Sorry. And, and he suddenly went, oh, my God, that would so, solve so many problems. Yeah. It's like, yes, this technology has been around for years. Yeah. Daryl's going to be stopping the spare room. Is he? Daryl, if you're listening, I'll text you back. <laughs> Sorry. Who you can listen to on Times Radio. Yes, you can. He's very, very good. Uh, I was going to do a impression of Daryl then. It's basically me, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, it's Daryl from Bolton. Welcome to Towns Radio. Right, what's up to next on Tip Papers? I mean, he's not that broad. He's Me and Daryl's only ever argument. I've never fell out with Daryl. We got into heated discussion once. We'd had a few drinks. Hattie was away. So we used to like, because, you know, she used to make like awful veggie food. So when she was away, we'd like get takeout. I always found it delicious. <laughs> yeah, we had a massive. I I still think he's more broader than me. I think broader. he's more northern than me. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's definitely now. Anyway, enough about Daryl. Let's talk about my favourite northerner. What have you been doing? Oh, um, so much stuff. Well, I've cried at another old woman. Oh, hung over again. Yeah, you remember on our last tour? Yeah, the woman on the train. Or oh, well, she wasn't on the train. But... Don't. So we were. I was massively hungover getting the train from Dublin to Belfast, and on one of the very scenic views, a woman was hanging out a washing, and the old woman, and she waved at the train when it went past, and no one waved back at her, and it made me cry. 
There was a woman at Leeds train station. She was sat on end at bench. This old sitting woman, sitting on end at bench. Yeah, and she was with a grandson. He was he he was so lovely. He was autistic. He was taking pictures of trains and stuff because mm-hmm. he loves it and video on it. Yeah, and we got chat away, and she texts him twice a week. You make me cry. I was really hungover. What about she, it though makes you cry? Because she was old. And she, and she, I was really hungover. Yeah, but she was having was, a nice time. I don't know. I'm so soft. And she had little sandwiches on her lap that she makes them both. Oh, I mean, crisps. And I was going to make me cry again. And I got on the train and burst out crying. <laughs> it was so, she was so lovely. I'm crying thinking I'm so soft. I'm so soft when it comes to old people. Good job on that art, but it's good. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Not Honestly, I, I was chatting away to her and I didn't want my train to come because we were chatting away. She sat on end of bench, a little tissue on her lap. She had a sandwiches in some tin foil for, for, for her grandson as well. It's the simple things in life. And she takes him down to Leech train set and they don't have and ticket guys. There's more good in the world. Don't charge them. They let them through the barriers so he can so go he can platform. take trains. That's nice. <sighs> she was so sweet and cried. And then... An homeless guy really made me laugh in Manchester. So I was doing a little mini tour. I was going to see all the capital stations. Yes, I know. And I got to Manchester and it was naturally pissing it, like pissing it down with rain in Manchester. And there's a homeless guy shivering. And um, he went, you got any spare change? I went, no, but I had a tray of cakes. So give him a tray of cakes. Why did you have a tray of cakes? Because I'd gone to see all the other capital stations and they'd done a little bake sale for me. Oh, right. Honestly, I, yeah. I felt like, I felt like, Harry and Meghan when they were light, you know, when they do a little tour. And... <laughs> I can't remember that five minutes. <clears throat> Don't be horrible. And then, um, so I give him a full tray of mm. cakes, all these lovely cakes. And he went, they got any weed in them? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, no, he went, all right, so. He went, you got any change on you anyway? I went, no. He went, you got any cigs? I was like, yeah, so I give him, so he really made me laugh. I remember when I was in Man- when I was in Manchester with you for the book tour, um, and Ben and I went out for breakfast, you were still in bed, and uh, and the the big issue seller went. You're the guy off TikTok. I thought that's interesting. The, I'm reaching a very broad range of people. The big issue. Seller. Yeah, on Deansgate. Oh, knock knock. Who's there? Big ish. Big issue. Not today, thanks. Well, you've you've peaked early. You've done your joke of the week. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited for the clonic? Yeah. I've been sent the. Been form. practicing. You've been. Pra- <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I've been sent the health form that we're going to go through. That it's got a mandatory to go through. That we're going to go through with you in a few weeks' time on stage. No, no, on on here. I think we go through it on stage. It'd be funnier. Well, we could do both. We're going away for the weekend as well, Gene Devers, to finish the rest of the show. Yes, the lovely holiday cottages. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah, so butch. Yeah. What? What's wrong with the holiday cottage? What do you mean? That's not. That's not butch or not butch. How, Stu? How is it working with that? Like. Because I'm seeing it as like a writer's retreat weekend, of course, but it's going to be a piss up, isn't it? Yeah. In the course. evening. No. I'm more creative when I've had a drink. I'm a lot looser. No, colonics in Manchester. Mm. Okay. Anyway. Does it hurt when they pull it out? No. 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 Does it hurt when it goes in? No. You really, you really, it, like, it It probably is is worse in your head than it will be. Okay. You're wanted, you're wanted again. I mean, you shouldn't have them too frequently, but twice a year, probably okay. And they help you lose weight and stuff, don't lose they? Lose weight, better for sleep, yeah, skin, okay. metabolism. If you've got any problems, it can identify them. Not, I mean, you've got a lot of okay. problems. It's not going to identify those, but it's going to any sort of bowel problems. Okay. I, I, promise, I promise you, you're going to love it. And right. also, Helen's an absolute hoot. So if nothing else, you'll have a laugh. How'd you get into that? I can ask her that. Yes. How'd you get into chloronics? You need to learn how is to she pronounce tra- it. Is it trained or is it just like... Yes. Is it no, no like now? It's just Becky from Estate can literally just give you Botox. Do you know what I mean? Well, I don't think Becky it... from the Estate can give you Botox because you have to do training for Botox. No, you don't. You yes. do a, you... No, no, you do. No, you don't. No, you do on a behalf two day... of the beauty industry, yes, you do. I bet there's a Becky listening right now on Estate who's done a two-day course online and gives Botox. No offence. Yes, but that's not legal and we don't condone that. No, she's got a certificate online. Oh, Trust I'm me. a celebrant in California, all right? Because I did a thing online right. when I was 14. There's my mum, the one who does my mum's in Spain now, she did it online, she does them all. They all have Botox-like brunches. <laughs> so they all... 
prick parties. Basically, yeah, mm. that'd be a better name for it. Prick parties. Yeah. I think I've been to one of those. And then they all get pissed and get the boat. Well, they get the Botox first and get pissed. On the pictures, it. I'd love to say it looks like you're enjoying themselves, but you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're meant to drink alcohol after Botox. Oh, you're fine. Don't yeah. tell them that. Like, oh, there. Anyway. Well, what an episode this has been. Should okay. we go to Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week? Yep. Here's the jingle. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Cha cha cha. Okay, uh, a bloke. <laughs> it's a good in this one. Oh, good. Yeah. A bloke wakes up one morning, finds a gorilla in his tree, and I'll tell you a punchline after the break. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we're going to get onto your problems and dilemmas very soon. Before we do, it's time to tell you the punchline of Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. So a bloke wakes up one morning mm. and finds a gorilla up his tree in the back garden. So he rings the zoo up and he says, you won't believe this, but there's a gorilla up my tree in the back garden. Zookeeper says, oh, for fuck's sake, not again. He says, right, give me your address. I'll be around in 20 minutes. So he gives him his address and 20 minutes later, zookeeper turns up in a van. He turns up with a dog and a gun. Ooh. And he, yeah, yeah. And they go out in the back garden. That's gorilla in tree. And he says, right, I'm going to go up and get the gorilla. He said, I'll shake the tree and the gorilla will fall down. And the dog's been trained to like bite its bollocks and oh. rag it until the gorilla passes out in agonizing pain. And then we'll put it in back at van. And the fella's like, all right. And the zookeeper says, this is, it's going to be really hard to watch, right? but it's the only way we can get it in back at Van and get it back to the zoo. Is that right? And bloke says, what's the gun for? He says, if I fall out at tree, shoot the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I was really wondering where that was going. <laughs> I've seen it on TikTok. It was Jethro. Do you remember Jethro? Yes. Who are is a gorilla up a tree? Yeah. Yeah. We. I promise you this, right? I went on a youth youth club trip when I lived in Wheaton, lived at Wheaton Barracks, and family's officer, mm. yeah, we were all in this van, we went up to Scotland for weeks, so army used to take you away for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So his mum and dad had been away, they got a bit of a respite from kids. Yeah. And um, he took us up to Scotland, it was about a six hour drive, and he played a Jeffro tape. And to all us kids. And how old were you? I was about 11. And yeah. I... Hear me out, 11 year olds should not be listening to a Jeffro tape mm. in van. It was hilarious. Anyway. But it informed who you are today. Exactly. Like I was shown Keeping Up Appearances age six, you were played a Jeffro tape. Yeah. And the man says to the Zuki, I've done that joke, no hot justice, but anyway. I'm, no, I laughed. Yeah. It was good. It was yeah. actually funny. Thank you. That is the standard now for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Okay. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. Uh, knock, knock. Oh, who's there? No. Sorry, I told it wrong. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. To get to the gay's house. Knock, knock. Who's there? The chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is like being back in primary school. <laughs> Sam Andy told me that. <laughs> of course he did. Sam Andy. Right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they were two good ones. Yeah, well, I tell you, I should have left the BBC years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on fine fet all these past few weeks. People are DMing me saying it's like a new person. Yes, it is. And I... <laughs> God bless you. Right, should we go to the uh, questions and dilemmas? Now, uh, remember, we're hearing these for the first time. So it's the first time yes. we're hearing them. We never read them before. Uh, if you need help with something, then get in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexedmyboss.com. You can DM us. We're at sexted on the socials. Or you can write to William, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply on his um, luxury greeting card with executive cell seal envelopes. The address for that is on the website, and that is sexedmyboss.com. This one is from Ryan. Hello, William and Jordan. You've always said to remove sunglasses when meeting someone, even if it's just briefly to shake their hand or complete your greeting. However, my sunglasses are prescription lenses, and as soon as I remove them, everything becomes a blur, and I would struggle to know if I'm making eye contact. Should I continue to remove my sunglasses and just aim for the top of the blur with my eyes, or should I leave them on and explain my dilemma? Forever grateful, Ryan. Oh, 
That's a nice one. That is a good one. Ryan, you should get those sunglasses or glasses that my grandma had when she stepped out into... Polarised? Yeah, they, they went to... Yeah, but I think it's when you're moving, greeting someone outside. That's a great question. I would say, yes, you do still remove them, even if you just sort of literally tip them up. Oh. Uh... Because it's it's not so much about... It, it's, it's a bit of a gesture. Mm. It's a bit like how um, sort of knights in suits of armour would raise the visor to make eye contact. Uh, yes. It's the same sort of thing. Just pop them up. That's, yeah. You pop are them good. Up, hello, and then pop them down again. Yeah, you it's are It's just good. so they can look into the, the whites of your eyes. That's very good. At Christmas, my dad forgot his reading glasses, so he had to use his sunglasses in every restaurant. <laughs> it's like being out with a Hollywood A-list. Like Anna Wintour. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Literally, he was there with his little bob and glasses, and he put his sunglasses on to read menu. Oh, bless. Yeah. That's nice. Oh, my mother like my mother. I sent you that text yesterday. Uh, that my, my mother watched your vaping documentary she did. on iPlayer. She said, Ted Jordan was very informative. I very much liked it. I didn't go to end because I was uh, too pissed by the end. So it's only <laughs> twenty two minutes, but all right, it was half hour. Yeah, I was going to say it's not twenty two minutes. Yeah, it was half hour. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and she said she liked you. She liked the look of your house. <laughs> and you said you sent a very nice text back. I did. I, I had to be the middleman to, to relay these texts. The, uh, I talked about this last time, didn't I? Yeah. They said, well, it's just going to be one shot in your house. And half the DMs are like, oh, is this the mansion? It's like, no, we're doing a very important doc on vaping. And I don't live in a mansion yet. <laughs> I did like on the trailer last week. I mean, it was one of our edit notes. When it zoomed out and you were talking about your hat, we put you in a mansion. Did you notice? Yes, I did. Very funny. It was very funny. It looked like the White House, actually. Did it? Yeah. Uh, this is from... Please. This is from Sue. That would be small for you, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's a maisonette in comparison to where you are. This is from Susie. Dear William Jordan and the sexted team, recently my dad broke up with his partner and signed up to a dating website. After a little while, he told me about his new love interest, a business school lecturer and painter who sounded like the perfect woman for him. There was, however, one unfortunate detail that genuinely made me feel sick to my stomach. We share the same first name. My dad doesn't see the problem with it, but I already feel uncomfortable thinking about the future situations in which our shared name will be used. Family gatherings, intimate situations, etc. I would be very grateful for any advice on the situation before my imagination gets the better of me. Lots of love. Your faithful French G and Diva, Susie. Susie. Um, we've had this before and we've talked about it before, like people having the same going out with a partner who's got the same name as the siblings and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it's it's not really an issue, and they don't see it as an issue. So, yeah, maybe... Because most of you have nicknames. You know, Darling, yeah. Sweetie Pie. Yeah, but during intercourse, you might be screaming out Susie, which is a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when he's called Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just one of them that don't even think about it. It, it just happens. It's only like having a dad and a son with the same name, isn't it? Mm. It's it's a tough. Could you go out with? Would if you what? met Mikey and he yeah. was called Brian? Would yeah. you find that weird? Mm, well, yeah, because I don't really know my father as Brian. I know him as father. I can't believe you call him father. All right, say you're. I'm switching to American Dean. Say your dad English. finally divorced your mum because of the drink. Sorry. You're finally divorced your mother. They are incredibly, they are the most happily married couple they I They really are. They really are. But just say. He turns on her shower for her every day. Just say in the world of sex, did he was sick of the accent and the booze. <laughs> <laughs> right. not, not the only one. So he got rid and then your mum got uh, a new man mm. and she was called William. Would you find that weird? Well, a little bit, but you'd get used to it. Yeah, you, you would. I think, do you know what? If, if she was happy, you'd be like, oh, well, fine. My mum probably would. What? But she wouldn't be able to go out with a Jordan, Ryan, Dominic or Bradley. Or another Graham. Or another Graham. Mm, no, that wouldn't bother as much. She said to me once, it really weak me out. She went, you know what girls fancy, like, young men? And, you know, like, when waiters come up and they're in the 30s, and we're like, oh, look at him. Mm. She said, I just, I can't. I think it's because I've got four boys at the same age. So I find it weird. Mm. Well, that's probably healthier. Yeah. Anyway, I don't really know where we're going yeah, with this. Yeah, Susie, Susie, I, I, I Get don't... over it. Yeah. I think it's weird to begin with. Sorry, but I, that was harsh. We've had a gin. I think very quickly, come on, drink more. I think very quickly it will pass. You'll just get used to it. Yeah, you will. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry too much. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm sure we've got gene divas yeah. who are together that have the same name. Oh, yeah. 
So, and it's like Alex and Alex. Sam was, and Sam. Sam and Sam. I knew a Ben and Ben. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. So, you just get used to it. Yeah, you'll, you'll get used to it. Try not to think about it. Try not to think of him screaming her name during sex. You should, regardless, even if she had a different name, you shouldn't be thinking about that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because that's weird. Yeah. This one's from Emma. Dear William and Jordan, my boyfriend and I have been together for two years. Before I met him, he purchased a house that needed a lot of work doing to it. A new kitchen, new floors, new plaster, etc. It was his dream to do a house by himself, despite having no experience. Unfortunately, his DIY skills are really not good at all. Everything he has done looks awful. Oh. We're at the stage where we want to live together at his house, but how do I break it to him that most of the work he's done needs completely redoing oh, God. without hurting his feelings? He thinks he's done a good job and expects a pat on the back for his efforts when almost every job has been botched. Kind regards, Emma. Oh, Emma, this is a tough one because you don't want to hurt his feelings. Could we send Mikey around? <laughs> <laughs> for a fee for a fee we could send my I'll sort it out no job too big or small talking Mikey of... Worrell man and son right. man and a van talking of Mikey he's uh, we've because I've, I've been as you would have detected last week I was unwell uh, so Mikey has uh, created the MHS the Mikey Health Service to look after me oh it's a barrel of laughs in your house free at the point <laughs> free at the point of use um <laughs> And, uh, yeah, he's, he's been very good. Okay. I can very much recommend the MHS. I'll just say that of all my impressions, they are quite close to the people that I do. But my no, one of, they're not. My one of, no, I don't want to ruin the illusion. My one of Mikey might have more added salt. Than... <laughs> <laughs> added salt is a whole saline solution. It might be a more pinch of salt than the rest of my impressions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I think Emma... It's so hard. Look... At the end of the day, if you say something to this guy and he's offended and the relationship begins to sour, is it really worth it? Obviously, if something is unsafe and it is going to put you or him or visitors to your house in grave danger, I think fair enough that you flag it. But if it's just like, oh, I can see a bit of his, ed his edge work is not good. The cutting in is a bit rubbish. Eh. I... I think you've got to be pretty firm here. Really? And say, look, I appreciate you've done it and you've done a great job and you've done it on a budget, but you can tell you've done it on a budget. And I just think we get someone in and maybe save up. I think you've got, because it'll just bug you and it'll niggle away. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like when people put their own artwork up in the house. You know, oh God. What's wrong with... You'd do that if you was an artist. Well, art is, art is subjective. Yeah, no, but putting your own artwork up. Oh, I art. see. Yeah. Oh, I see things that like, you have drawn. Yeah. Yeah, mm. no. What have you got on your walls? I'm very minimalist. Yeah, you don't, I don't think you do have much on your no, walls. No, I did. I've got some my pictures up in that now. Do you? Okay, I'll have to come around and see. Yeah. Oh, I'll talk about this more next week, but we are days away from being fully decorated. Are you getting decorated again? Yes, I borrowed Jonathan's decorator. The last decorator I had round did an absolutely horrific job. Was that the homophobic one as well? Uh, potentially. He was... I, I can't get... I mean, he. I was going a very dark colour in the bedroom. So when you go dark oh, paint, you. it's... Um, well, it's the colour that you have on your walls. Um, but it's it's that colour. You copied. Um, no, but, I didn't. Yes, you did. Don't worry me. I out. got my walls painted before you. No, I didn't. And you copied my bed. No, it's... you copied my bed. No, you. it's so weird that we have the same wall colour and same bed mm. I mean mine's a lot bigger but anyway <laughs> well it's to fit that head in <laughs> the one on your head um, but the um, the last one was so awful I thought I've got to get a decorator from someone that has better standards than me and the only person on God's earth <laughs> that fits that criteria is Jonathan Vernon Smith. Yeah. And so his decorator, just Jack, is coming round to decorate. Oh okay. Right. So we're very excited. Again, we're getting exactly the same colour. But it's it's been five years that we've been there. So we're just gonna get touched up. Have you been there five years? Nearly. Jeez. Yeah. Mm. I know. Uh but yeah, hope that helps Emma. Uh, Emma, my suggestion would be how how Jordan has different advice, but I would say, does it bother you that much? No, I'd say bring it up. Have a couple of drinks and bring it up. Um, this is from another Susie, but a Z-Y, not an S-I. 
Um, Dear William, Jordan, PB and Diego, they're not here. I moved to North London from Egypt and decided to get a dog. I needed to find the best walking spots and found Hampstead Heath to be a nice little area. She went to Hampstead Heath. I know it well. After a while, <laughs> I noticed... Do. Yes, it's very nice. I noticed that several other dog walkers warned me against going to the dogging area on the heath. They didn't. That didn't make any sense to me, as I'm not familiar with the term, and assumed they meant doggy area. You can imagine my surprise as I walked the dog through some bushes one day and discovered what dogging actually means. Do we need to clarify for our listeners what dogging is? It's where... Over to Jordan. So, putting it bluntly, it's... My take on it is where a bloke will take his wife in car down to a, a car park or a local spot and he'll watch other blokes shag his wife well and i think also potentially he might be enjoying himself with someone else oh they can swap yeah and you don't have to be a woman no you no. can be of any gender yeah anyway susie continues is that what dogging is yeah it is, isn't it Obviously, I was a little slow to catch on, as the trail of sex... I just don't get it, because telly's really good these days. <laughs> like, how do people have time to go dogging? Because I assume it's a weeknight activity. People could be watching very good documentaries about vaping on it, iPlayer. I know. It's the same with people that, like, go rock climbing and play five-a-side and stuff. How do they have time? Well, I think they're playing five-a-side on the Heath, actually. Yeah, I just, like... There's so much good stuff on telly at the It's not like old days where telly used to be a bit of shit and you'd just go to pub like a dog in. I used to get that. But now there's so much good stuff on telly. I don't know why anyone would want a good dog in. No. I'd rather be at home watching. It. I've got a list long as my arm of all good stuff that you could stream. Thank God you said arm. <laughs> anyway. Okay. I just don't get it. People are like, oh, starting up a new... Paddle boarding club. Do you want to go? No, I do not. Do you want to go fucking paddle boarding on a Wednesday night? I want to have my tea and watch telly. It's like people who train for marathons. Yeah. Why? Well, I get right. marathons. No. But you know, like, people, like, it, there's people you'll be listening now who at work, every night after work, they've got something going on, an activity. Yeah. Pub quiz. Pub mm. quiz, all right, I'll give them that. Uh, hot yoga, netball. Oh, oh God. What, in year eight, netball. Piss off. <laughs> Anyway, Susie continues. Obviously, I was a little slow to catch on as the trail of sex paraphernalia around the area hadn't raised any alarm bells. So my question is, what is the proper etiquette for walking in on people having rough sex in a bush? Should I keep walking and mind my business? Should I apologise for disturbing them? Please advise. Lots of love to you all. Susie. Well, I'd say you've got two options, Susie. Probably the former. Just carry on. Move, move away. Continue with your dog walk. Option two. Join in. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That's great advice, William. Option three, film it, make money off YouTube. All right. Or, what, or whatever the sex version is. My my advice is just to be, um, and you've come from Egypt, so assuming you might not be British, but be very British about it and just go, good evening, and walk <laughs> off. Nice day for it. Evening. <laughs> oh, what about this weather, eh? That, that kind of thing. Hello, Minister. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Oh, well, you are a local MP. Well, I've got you for a second. <laughs> a lot of dog shit in our local park. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, I think, Susie, I mean, I say don't walk your dog at night. Obviously, dog walkers do walk dogs at night, but maybe don't know, go near parks. Can we have an etymology of the origins of dogging? No. Please. No, that's a hard no. Please, because, like, <laughs> who decided one day... Me and the missus. Also, gonna, why is it called dogging? Me, that's why. Me and the missus are going to go out. And who thought dogging? Like, it's such a horrible word. Do you have to do it doggy style for it to be classed as dogging? What would you like to call it? Um, Catting. No, just shagging outdoors whilst people watch. I've got a very funny story, actually, but I can't tell it on air. You can do it on the tour. Me, mate. You know, like when you're 16, 17, and you're... <laughs> <laughs> I am absolutely not mentioning any names, but you know, when you're 16, 17, and me mate had That's a... the age I started teaching etiquette, <laughs> so this is probably a very similar story. <laughs> my mate was like, um, he just passed his driving test as a girlfriend, and obviously back then, like, you still lived with your parents. So they went up to, I think it was Beacon Fell in Preston, and they're like, going at it in car. 
I mean, mate, look, so <laughs> there's a bloke next to the window just having a wank watching him. <laughs> <laughs> I went, did you stop? The shit said, I just carry on though. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Anyway, each to their own. We're not one to judge. We've heard it all on this podcast over the years. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling, John, we haven't heard it all. I feel we probably no, will have probably done. probably out. We've not even scratched the surface, have no. we? No. This final one is from Anonymous. Dearest William Jordan, EPB, Executive Chairman Emeritus, and the rest of the chorus... My mother, 53, and my father, 55. God, it's like a Sun article. Yeah, just... Jordan North, 36. I'm like, 34. <laughs> <laughs> my mother, 53, and father, 55, have a hefty 3 million followers on social media. Wow. More than you. Yes. Is that collectively, or to... did I have a joint account? Or would you do all the dancers and stuff? Oh, yeah. Who my little booty? Who my booty? My friends like to keep an eye on their socials for a laugh, too, which in itself is embarrassing. But imagine my surprise when out of the blue they announce they're now dipping their toe into OnlyFans. Would you like to explain what OnlyFans well, is? OnlyFans has got a bit of a bad rep, but it's just people owning their own content. So they, it's not all getting everything out. I mean, most of it is. Yeah. But OnlyFans is a subscription service. Yes. Surface. S- service. Service. People do it on surfaces. Uh, where you basically it's nude pictures and stuff that they sell to their subscribers, and you can make a lot, lot of money on it. Okay, so that that's OnlyFans. As you can imagine, Anonymous continues, this is mortifying. So what is the etiquette for explaining that your parents have their fossiling bits out on a live stream every other day, sprinkling, sparkling, and spunking no. for all to see? Cheers, darlings. Anonymous. XO. The mum and dads do that on OnlyFans. Yeah. They shag on OnlyFans. I assume so, or they get naked. Oh, God. I always think that about people that do porn. I wouldn't judge anyone that did porn, but I always think, well, years to come, what if you like? Some you want to run for office? No, or... not that. There's no, no shame in it, because everybody watches it, don't they? But it's like, what if you have a... Yeah. Mm. Um, like, what if they're kids in it in years to come? But they must know that. Yeah, but everyone's got... Well, not everyone has children, but... Everyone's got a yeah. past. I, I, I Look, it, it's always odd when it's your own family. I think... But everyone is someone's family. Yeah. So each to their own. There'll be other people just... I'm saying this. My parents don't do it. Your parents don't do it. So it's it's very easy for me to say that. Your parents are still on Sky Digital. They don't even know how to work a phone, do they? <laughs> Their DVD player the other day, it's in Russian. They... <laughs> Do I don't they, know why. They fa- they, do they still use a DVD player? Yes. Oh, God. And they don't even know how to do it, do This they? is why I know that they will never listen to the podcast, because they just they just don't know what to do. My mum and dad are the same. I went, last time I went to their house, the, the sound was tinny. Yeah. And they went, oh, yeah, it's because of room, because there's no carpet. So I was like, no, it's because your telly's <laughs> on the wrong setting. I sorted it out for them. Um, I think you've just got to kind of get over it and not really think about it. Definitely don't subscribe, because that's... No. Well, incest for once. Well, it's not incest. If you watch, it's, it's an incest adjacent. If you're watching your mum and dad on OnlyFans, it's, mm. it's weird. There'll be people that listen. It. There'll be people listening right now. Yeah. Who've got family on OnlyFans? Who've yeah. got sisters that are porn stars? And they stuff. may themselves be on OnlyFans. It's, or brothers who are porn stars. It's just. It's just. Um, it's like driving a bus. It's a job. Should you and I start an OnlyFans? <laughs> because it's not all for sex. Yeah. You and I could have one where each week it's a different D. And we are comparing Ds. Like we've done at the start of this episode, we could clip that up and put it exclusively on OnlyFans. So is it, is it, not, is it not sexual? You're the con- one who's just told me it's not all sex. It's not all sex, is it? I, don't, I actually don't know. Is it? I think there's oh, just... Oh, I actually don't know. No, because oh. there's, like, there's Olympians and stuff that have it. Olympians? Yeah, that they have it. And they just, it's or just, Denise Lewis? I don't know. It's just them in a pair of Speedos. I don't know. I, I don't know this Well, maybe area. we'll go into it for a boner. Bonus. <laughs> That's maybe where the Gene Divas could see Ben getting rimmed. <laughs> yes, well, it all goes on. Thank you so much for your letters. <laughs> I really don't think we gave much advice today. No, I don't think we did. I can understand it's weird, but... It's weird, but it's just, it's a job. And I'm sure your parents still love you. And you can't begrudge anyone who, pay, you know, if it's paying the mortgage. Yep. Yeah. Right, shall we, um, shall we end the episode there? Yes, I think we should. Okay. Thank you very much for all your questions and dilemmas. Remember, you can listen and watch us every Tuesday and Friday. Is it me? 
Well, it's not anymore because they're just down the lines. Is that it? Yeah. Where? Oh. Uh, thank you for your questions and dilemmas. Remember, you can listen and watch us every Tuesday and Friday. We will see you on Friday. It's like Groundhog Day, isn't it? Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.